This is Andy Perrault for Boxing News. I'm joined by Johnny Nelson here in Birmingham. Johnny, we've finally got this one underway. How are you? I apologise because I've given you this, I gave you the slip yesterday and I didn't realise until I was on the motorway and I was like, oh, Andy, man, I'm sorry. So today I'm going to stay, in, I'm going to be the last man standing. Um, uh, so I apologise. It's all good, Johnny. I forgive you. You've always made time for me, which is uh, very appreciated. And here we are. We're here, but here in Birmingham. Joshua Boatze returns to Sky Sports first fight under the boxer banner. Um, step in, an interesting opponent. Callum Smith received critics when he was going to step in the ring with him. Why do you feel like it's understandable for Joshua Boatze to fight him? I don't understand why Callum Smith would have been criticised for stepping in the ring with him. He's he's he's, he's unbeaten. Uh, uh, you look at his pedigree, he's, he's done the job, and so therefore you've got to fight somebody. Somebody has to get the opportunity. Why wouldn't he? It's the first time he's boxing outside of Poland. I think this will be a, um, a leveler to see where, if the layoff has affected uh, Joshua Boatze at all. Uh, it's not a dangerous opponent for him because, as far as I'm concerned, Joshua Boatze is a world class fighter. So therefore, if he's a world class fighter, he should be fight other fighting other fighters that, that you believe are, are world class. Um, you fight anybody less than that, that's when you get turned over. That's when you get to the point where, you know, you go in there, you think this is a done deal, you get beaten by someone that shouldn't beat you. So I think it's, uh, to say he's had time off for him to come back, I think, I think it's the right choice. Matchmaking is everything. What do you expect to see from Joshua Boatze tomorrow night when he returns, when he steps between those ropes? How important is it that he, if he wins, he's got, to, he's got to make a statement now? So he's got an ex there is an excuse because of inactivity if he, if he puts on a, a, an underpar performance, but I don't think he will. I think Virgil Hunter is one of the best, if not the best coach currently in the world today. And so Virgil Hunter uh, had made sure Joshua immersed himself in that lifestyle. He didn't let him do what, and what um, Amir Khan did and pop in and pop out of training camp because that reflected on Virgil. He said, if you're going to be with me, you're with me. Uh, I, I rate Boatze for actually doing that. I rate because not many fighters will show such a commitment. The downside of that is Joshua Boatze Partly, partly because of his personality, he's not, uh, he's not on the tip of your tongue. He's not saying some outrageous stuff. He's not as a braggadocious and in your face as your Ben Whittakers and people like that. So now he's taking over his own business. It's his, it's his responsibility to, to promote himself outside of boxing business. And so if he doesn't do it, he's got to get his team to do it. He's got to get somebody to be posting stuff out, like AJ does. You know, and, and, but unfortunately, like AJ, uh, Joshua Bawatsi is being penalised for being a respectful, uh, humble guy. And, and, uh, and that's what it is, because you want someone to hate. You want someone to say, I can't believe he said X, Y, Z. I can't believe he thinks X, Y, Z. You know, so, um, so I think uh, Bawatsi is now his own business. Bawatsi is a, a potentially, I always said, he's very, he's very uh, Evander Holyfield-esque. Um, and um, I think it's going to take time. We've got to see that now. I want him to be out at least three times this year. I want him to, to get consistency in his career. I want the fans to remember why we're getting all getting excited about this young man initially when he first turned pro. What happens on Saturday night in that main event? I think it's a long drawn out points win. Um, and, uh, uh, but I think it'll be uh, a fight where I think Pete, the fans will enjoy it. Sticking with his division, Ben Whitaker, you mentioned he returns nine months out of the ring, or eight, months, eight, nine months out of the ring uh, since that August card out in Saudi Arabia. What are you hoping to see now? Uh, I've seen stars in the past come through from, from nothing to, to being from zeros to heroes. Ben Whitaker is that, that kind of fighter. I think injuries have hampered his career, uh, hampered his development, which is a shame. Ben Whitaker now is back in the mix again. If, ben, if, if Joshua Moats had Ben Whitaker's mouth, Joshua Boyatsi would be the most popular fighter in the world. Ben Whitaker has got it back to the front, he's got the mouth, but you've got, he's got, got to be given the opportunity to prove it. And he will, and he will prove it. As long as he's injury free, Ben Whitaker is, is your next pay per view star in the next couple of years, as long as he's injury free. Away from Ben, just touch on a couple of the other fights Lauren Price and Kirsty Bavington, the yep. first ever female British title. Yeah, yeah, for the Lonsdale belt. Uh, the Lonsdale belt's on the line for, to, for the girls to get it. And I actually thought to myself, your, your Natasha and Savannah's, that are past that stage, I think, I want to box for that. And I could see him actually dipping back down and saying, I want to box for this, this belt here. Um, but um, um, I think it's a good fight. I think no matter what, it brings out the best in everybody that's fighting for it. It brings out the best in it, and I like that. Uh, so uh, again, I think it'd be a good fight. I think Lauren pulls it off. I think Lauren is, you look at 
her combat career, not just boxing. She's always been top level. She's a fighter. Just the final one, one which is kind of split opinion as to who will come out on top. Tyler Denny and McCauley McGowan, a great fight. McGowan, I saw him get robbed in France and he got robbed. Uh, Tyler Denny is underrated because he's, he's, he's so obvious in your face, but he's very fit. He's very, uh, um, uh, very aggressive. I'm with Tyler Denny. Um, I think Tyler Denny, again, I, 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 um, I think, I think the kid can, he, he's a handful. And if you're, if you, if you sat back a bit, you know, this kid's going to do you. Just want to move back to your division, your old division, rather, Johnny. Um, obviously, we had that the, the sad and very devastating news about David Lloyd recently suffering a stroke when he returned to New Zealand. Thankfully, from what's been reported, what Ben Shalom says, he seems like he's had surgery and he will make a full recovery. But just want to get your thoughts and your well wishes. Well wishes to David Light, absolutely devastate for him and, and his family, the worry for his family. Unfortunately, our, our sport will get the blame for that. Um, and, uh, you know, but Godspeed, um, inshallah, this man will, will, will pull through, will get to, to full recovery again. I also want to say, you know, rest in peace, Eric Guy, Eric Guy. You young guys don't know Eric. You know, back in the day when I was amateur and professional coming through, you wanted somebody to, to get you a tape of your fight. He was the one. Eric, he's a lovable rogue in our sport, was a lovable rogue in our sport, well-respected, underrated. Unfortunately, the modern era took him out, put him out of business, uh, where guys like you were actually there filming fights and doing what you're doing. But um, um, respect and condolences to his family. Um, Eric Guy, um, uh, part of our part of our, our boxing uh, heritage. Obviously, I'll echo those words. I've thought about to Eric's family, and of course, same goes with David. Uh, just sticking with the cruiserweight. So Richard Riakpour, he's got a new deal there with Boxer, with Sky Long Term. How does he go about trying to get back World Title fight, Johnny? Should be his next fight. Yeah, I know. And so, so it's not his problem now. It's it's, it's down to his promoter. Uh, them to, and that's that's going to be an issue. They, they want to get that world title fight, they're going to have to pay through the nose for it. Um, uh, because right now, to be a, a cruiserweight in the UK is brilliant. Uh, and potentially, we can have two two world champions, two world champions here if he, if he picks it up. Because it's going to go one way or the other with Bill and Smith and, and uh, Coley, but at least he's still in the UK. Johnny stepping up to heavyweight. We saw an article come out from Thomas Hauser suggesting that AJ should step away from the sport. You get your thoughts on his comments within that, that piece. Uh, I said it. I said that AJ should step away and have a break. But if you're saying he should pack in, I think Thomas Hauser's problem is he's never done it. And for Anthony Joshua to, do, to talk about reporting and, 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 and tell him he's, he's not good at his job, it'd be out of order because he's not a reporter. I think being a reporter, being a boxing historian is a talent. To be a fighter is a talent. You understand what it takes, you understand what commitment it is. So when Hauser says that, he's looking at it from a civilian's point of view. Uh, I respect Hauser. Um, he's looking at it from a uh, civilian's point of view. So therefore, in doing that, he's, he's, saying, he's saying rookie things. He, he, he's got it wrong. If, if AJ was a punch-drunk fighter that was struggling to, and you saw every fight he got battered, I would totally understand where Hauser was coming from. But, but Hauser's talking from a, from a point of view where he's saying, you know what, you've lost against top-tier fighters, so therefore, uh, Jack in, what else are you going to do? Anthony Joshua believes he can, he can still create that top-tier again. Uh, so, so that's down to him. I do believe um, a break was needed for him to get his motivation, to get his acting get that together, uh, his, his desire together. I do believe that before the Franklin fight. I do believe this break, if he doesn't fight until December, is the best thing. It suits Anthony Josh more than anybody else. So, um, so, so there's, there's, and I'm speaking from an ex fighter's point of view, not a Hauser's point of view. AJ's obviously been scrutinised throughout his career, Johnny, before and after for Franklin fight from, from when he turned professional. Um, spoke to Matt Mackley and asked him the same question yesterday. Matt was, he was kind of 50 50. He understood why AJ might decide to retire going off of Thomas Hauser's article. Um, but then he also knows that there's big fights still out there for him. Would you understand, did you understand that all why maybe Thomas would suggest that or are you completely Tom, against Thomas it? Thomas is saying it because he's looking at it from a civilian's point of view. He's looking at it from the point of view of a fan, of someone that's never been punched in the face, of someone that's never had to train like ridiculous hours and commit so much time. He's looking at it from, 
from your mother's point of view, saying, why are you doing that? You're getting hit in your head. You, you, you know, understand. So when you're, when you're an ex-fighter or when you are a fighter and you understand what it takes to become a fighter, unless the obvious is there, like you look at Roy Jones, you look at Van der Hollivers and the back end of the career thinking, yo, you need to jack in, you're getting hurt. Anthony Joshua's not getting hurt. He's getting turned over by top fighters, but he's not getting hurt. Now, now so Anthony Joshua, he, I don't think he's the kind of guy that goes in for the money. He's got ridiculous though. I think, I think if he didn't really, really believe he could get to the top, I don't think he'd fight. So that's why I said he needs time out to decide why he wants to do this. So from, for Hauser to say, he's speaking from, from a civilian's point of view. So, so I don't get where he's coming from. He's a reporter. That's what he's speaking about. So he's speaking, speaking from a, a reporter's point of view. Obviously, there was those reports, well, AJ came out saying that initially he wasn't going to fight till December. I know Eddie's, Eddie Hearn said this week that they're looking at maybe want to squeeze one more in before then. Let's say he doesn't and he waits until December, though. Would that be a smart move to go in with yeah. Deontay Ward? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Because, and because he's, he's based himself in America, training out there. He needs to, to, to it's got to be like walking, talking, eating, breathing, sleeping. What he's learning in the gym has got to become, become second nature. Because if he's going in and he fought like he did against Franklin, he's in betwixt in between, he'd get knocked out against Wilder. He can't afford to do that. So, so I think he needs time to concentrate 100% on what he's learning. And so when he gets into fight, he's fully confident, fully believes what he's doing and why he's doing it. Johnny connor has been doing media this week for the first time in a while. Um, he's apologised to the public for the way that he's handled uh, the situation around his failed drugs tests. Just want to get your thoughts on anything he's had to say and what, what you make of everything that's come out. You know what? Common sense is kicking in. Um, um, he's an emotional kid with his, where his heart, where's his heart in his sleeve. I understand him being pissed off that people didn't believe him and not their lying eyes. I understand where he's coming from because he believes in his truth. Uh, so, so therefore, I think uh, uh, Conor Ben has finally um, thought, you know what, I want to get on with my career. I don't want to spend my career arguing with people. Because at the moment you mention Conor Ben, and it's associated to with drugs. You want to mention Conor Ben, and it's associated with fights. Uh, and so, and he gets that. If he wants to get on with his career, bite the bullet, take the licks, move on. Sticking with his division, or maybe one slightly above there, uh, um, Cal Brook. What's happening with Cal? Cal's out in uh, Future Insurance at the moment, training. Has he said anything about when he might look to get back in the ring? Yes. Can you tell me when that will be? No, <laughs> I can't say anything. Has he had talks about fights? Yes, he has, yeah. Any which are really kind of like getting that fire back within him? Cal has got his priorities in order and he's, he's dealing with him first before dealing with anything else. I know talks of being there, I know he's, he's like making sure he's in a certain position to, to, if he decided to fight, he's in condition to do that. But Keller's concentrating on him first, which I think is, is great. Do you expect to see him make a ring return then? I hope he doesn't, but it's a Kel's call. Away from that one, um, just a couple of quickly things to get your thoughts on. Taylor Cameron, May 20th, just your thoughts please, Johnny. Um, uh, Kate Taylor, again, I think Kate Taylor, she's been a trailblazer. Kate Taylor, yeah, Don S. Uh, I think she gets the job done. Uh, you can never write her off. Another fighter that that concentrates concentrates on more what's happening in the ring rather than out of the ring. I think uh, Kate Taylor will put on a put on a show. Haney Loma the same night. I know, I know. I think Haney pulls it off. I do. I think Haney pulls it off. I think uh, Lomachenko. Tell Matt Macklin, Matt. You know what? I think Lomachenko. Um, he was he was a star coming through, but now you're going up against a big Gordon's man. You know, I think Kenny pulls it off. And then John Ryder, a man who many within British boxing uh, seem to love, can't find many who will say a bad word about him. Difficult task this weekend. Canelo Alvarez, your thoughts on what he said there? I rate John Ryder. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, enough respect to him. I don't think he wins. I think Canelo Alvarez is not the fight he was, but the fight he is beats, beats uh, John Ryder, especially at home. Can I just ask Johnny, you know, as, a, as an away fighter for John, going out there, Canelo's homecoming, mm. How do you change your mindset of knowing that the cards may not work in your favour if you feel you've done enough? You know, how do you get past that? Because it's been a question which has been you've asked. You've got to be honest with yourself. Say, I'm going to go out there and give it my all. And if these people are right, then they're right. If they're wrong, it's on them. As long as you go out there and give an honest performance of who you are and what you can do, then the job's done. All right, Johnny, it's a pleasure as always. I know you've got a few more interviews to do. So thank you for speaking to me. I'll see you soon. Sweet.